chopped off heads, big heads and blood. To me, riffs are fucking timeless. You've got generations of people going to see them. It's our best album so far. The fans have been asking for it. They've been asking for it for years. I would listen to it over and over and over again today. It's like music we play, man. You're either going to like it or not. There are satanic bands. Some of them really aren't. We're playing the craziest drunken debauchery show we've played probably ever. It is not as conducive to be doing a podcast. You're listening to The Great Metal Debate Podcast. Metal fans, welcome back to The Great Metal Debate Podcast. This is episode 66, May 2020. I'm Robert, a.k.a. Gong Thong Metallicus, and returning from reminiscing with the other 80s metal fans at the Assisted Living Facility is our regular contributor, Brian. Brian, what's going on? First of all, suck my dick, and second of all, good to be involved in the podcast, dude. So, I had this idea for a podcast topic. And then when I got into it, I was a little surprised that it it wasn't what I thought it was. Dude, you have no idea how true that statement is. I started looking into bands that I thought were disbanded, and they're still going from the 1980s. I thought the idea of what are our top defunct bands would be interesting. It's actually really damn hard. These bands, they have nine lives or more. They just keep going and going and going. Holy shit, man. Do you realize how much bands from the 1980s want to stay relevant? I mean, they keep doing these fucking reunion tours. And the thing is, the music they put out back in the 80s was so terrible. Like, they oh, should have disbanded back dick. then. Just to be clear, we're not considering bands that have split apart. For example, Queensryche. There's essentially now two Queensrykes. Uh, Grim Reaper. There's two Grim Reapers. There are a ton of bands that split up but didn't call it quits. Yeah. Let's just say I found that shit out the hard way. And there's a ton of bands, Brian, that claim that they're on hiatus, but they've been on hiatus for like 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. If you haven't put out anything in 20 years, you're done. Don't don't tell me you're keeping on. So let's get back and let's talk through our top defunct bands. But let's just do a back and forth. We'll count down our top five. Oh, okay, let me start. At number five, I'm thinking Van Halen with David Lee Roth. I love Van Halen. I have always loved Van Halen. But I love the original Van Halen, which started from 1978 to 1984, and they had songs like Atomic Punk, Eruption. Listen, Eruption created a generation of metal and rock guitarists, and then when they switched, they had this sort of 1980, uh, 1984 Van Hagar thing that went on, and it turned out to be pop. And so how do you appreciate that kind of thing? Of course, I'm thinking about metal bands, not rock bands like Van Halen. Oh, you suck. Do you know how many guitarists Oh, I know. All the, ro- all the rock guitarists love Van Halen because uh, you're, they're, you're, they're one of the ultimate rock bands. If I was into rock, man, I would love that band. But I'm a fan of metal, and so they're kind of off my radar. Here's what you forget. Metal from that time sounded different. They were considered metal back in 1978. Van Halen's not a metal band, but whatever. At my five, I had Revamp. That's Floor Jansen's side project following the breakup of After Forever. One self-titled album and then the follow-up Wild Card. I got a chance to see that band live. Such amazing musicianship. Floor, I think, arguably at her best. As big a fan as I am of Nightwish, that's not her project. This was something that she carved out, wrote everything. 
I just love that Wild Card album. It was amazing to see them live, and I hope maybe someday she's able to pick that back up, but revamp my number five defunct band. At number four is Dawkins. They had so many good songs. Unchain the Night, Into the Fire, Burning Like a Flame, and they were so good. And yet, they couldn't stay together because they had so many strong personalities. They were a great band. They were a band from the 80s. And George Lynch is an incredible guitarist. I love everything they put out. Would love to see them together come again. Dawkins. They are the exemplar of the worst of so-called 80s metal. It's the most pathetic kind of mealy-mouthed metal. There's a few metal riffs in there, but the sickly sweet vocals, the pop melodies, uh, Dokken to me is terrible. This band sucks. They sucked in the 80s. They suck today. And I hope and pray that Dawkins stays broken up. Yeah, I'm sorry they don't cry about their emotions and explore their feelings for metal, but they were great metal, great metal solos, great metal guitars, and that's what makes metal great. Not how much you explore your vocal range, not how much you explore your ability to become artistically challenged, Dawkins was metal. The fact that they had the soundtrack to a Freddy Krueger movie says everything you need to know about this band. They're a bunch yeah, of yeah, you know, they're a you, bunch you of know, LA funny, sellouts. Man. Have you ever had a Freddy Krueger movie uh, soundtrack uh, uh, associated with one of your bands? No, no, that's how it's part of how I know that they're. I metal. rest my case. I rest my case, man. Yes, you do rest your case. You, you I definitely do. For my number four, I'm actually going local, indie. I'm going with a band that you and I have both seen. A band called Beyond Duplication. Just one D there. Beyond Duplication. You know, man, this is a band that stylistically isn't really in my wheelhouse. They would be along the lines more like a Memphis Mayfire kind of thing. I would even say borderline whether they're even metal, stylistically. But dude, I've seen them play live, and they have that it. There's some undefinable it that bands have when they play together, and Beyond Duplication had it. Amazing guys, amazing performances, Amazing vocal melodies, trade-offs between the harsh and the clean vocals, just great rhythm section, and they just wrote great songs. Their one album, Open Eyes, from 2016, it's an amazing album. I don't care what style of music you're into, whether you're a metal fan or whatever style of music you enjoy, you would enjoy this band because they just write great songs was so sad to see them go away. I, I really thought that they were the sort of band that maybe they wouldn't make it to have a major label signing, but that they would be able to tour throughout the U.S., maybe go across to Europe. Sadly, life happens. Band members had to move on, and uh, they're no longer doing it. My world is smaller for it. I actually agree with you with Beyond Duplication. They are an amazing band. They're a local band. They're extremely talented, and yet they have not had a great exposure because of where they live, man. That's what sucks, man. They're a great metal band. It's one of the few things that you and I are going to agree on. I love Beyond Duplication. And let's hear a song from Beyond Duplication. This is Words I Speak by Beyond Duplication.
The Odd Duplication was an extreme modern metalcore band hailing from Scottsville, Kentucky, who released their first and only full-length album, Open Eyes, in 2016. Listen, man, this is one of the bands that is a classic example of guys that are fucking talented that just can't catch a break. They're great songwriters, they're great musicians, and yet they still don't make it. I love bands like this, and there are so many more. Okay, for my number three band, I pick Black Sabbath. Now, I understand that they're a band that is still together, kind of, sort of, but I would pick any Black Sabbath with Dio or Ozzy singing above any other Black Sabbath that has ever been. My God, can you imagine what they would be like without those two singers? Can you imagine what Black Sabbath would be without the legends that sang for them? I can. They had three amazing albums with Tony Martin, who I actually think was the best Black Sabbath singer. You are such a dick when you pick stuff like this, man. Why do you think that? We have legends like Ozzy and Dio, and yet you pick the one that nobody's ever heard of? Metal fans have heard of Tony Martin. Eternal Idol is awesome. Headless Cross is one of my favorite albums. Tear is a masterpiece. The singers that I enjoy the most are Ozzy and Dio. I'm a nostalgia guy, man. I love to live through the past. Headless Cross is from 1989. How much more nostalgic do you need to be, man? That's the purest and best Black Sabbath ever was. Can you imagine what Black Sabbath would be today with Ronnie James Dio or Ozzy? My or God, Tony man. Martin. Even better, Tony Martin, who blows both those Fuck singers away. Tony Martin, man. I don't care about Tony Martin. Can you I imagine? I don't care the... about your stupid Dio or Ozzy. They're both lame. Dio's dead. Ozzy's basically dead. Tony Martin kicks both their asses. Tony Martin hasn't got shit to do with the greatness of Black Sabbath. Dio, Ozzy, those are the names that bring you back to the table. Those are the names that people want to hear. Those singers sucked. Your versions of Sabbath are the shittiest versions of Sabbath. At my number three, I have a band that blows Black Sabbath away. And that is Stream of Passion, Marcella Bovio's project amazing Dutch band. Embrace the storm, the flame within, darker days, a war of our own, four incredible albums. When I learned that this band had broken up, I was crushed. She is an amazing singer, an amazing violinist. I'm sorry, did you just say amazing violinist? Does that ever fucking fit into the metal genre? My oh God, come on, man. I'm fortunate still getting to hear her with other projects like The Gentle Storm, Mayan, and her solo work, but I always enjoyed Stream of Passion, one of the best Dutch symphonic progressive metal bands out there. I am sure that she's very good at getting in touch with her emotions, but when it comes to metal, come on, man, dude. I tell you, she kicks Ronnie James Dio, the dad's ass. Oh, my God. You think that she is better than Ronnie James Dio? She is better than Ronnie James Dio. He was lame. Fortunately, we don't have to hear any more of his stuff. Okay. My number two seems like an obvious band. You know I'm born to lose and gambling's for fools, but that's the way I like it, baby. I don't want to live forever. And don't forget the Joker. I fucking love Motorhead. Lemmy's gone, and I understand that he's not coming back, but I freaking love Motorhead. If I have to pick a band that I want to not be defunct, that's the one. I saw Motorhead back in 1989. You know, they're like a Spinal Tap, kind of a joke band. You know, rock and roll, whatever. But, but you are not a fucking metal fan. You love shit that nobody cares about in the metal genre. Motorhead, they may be one of the ultimate rock and roll bands. I'm not that into rock and roll. Dude, you cannot tell me that Ace of Spades 
and Bomber are not metal songs. You have no idea what you're talking about. No, they're great hard rock songs. If you're into that. I'm into that because it's metal. Not because it's, it's fucking not, it's not metal. Uh, rock songs. It's hard rock. If you're looking for a hard rock band, I think Motorheads is one of the good ones. For older guys like you, that's more your speed. You know, I heard, Brian, that Lemmy is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. You know what, man? Lemmy is not rock and roll. Lemmy is metal. Do you well, remember? Why is he in the Rock Let and Roll Hall you. of Fame? Do you remember the first time you heard Ace of Spades? Dude, I saw them play Ace of Spades live. Do you remember how great it was? I remember I was thinking, I'd be interested when the metal bands hit the stage. Oh, my God. You were such a dick. I mean, you have no idea. If it wasn't for Lemmy, you would not be even in this podcast. For my number two defunct metal band, I have Death, the amazing classic band fronted by god of metal Chuck Schuldiner. Scream bloody gore, leprosy, spiritual healing, human, individual thought patterns, symbolic, the sound of perseverance, it's hard to imagine it's more of an influential band than Death. What Death did, as far as death metal, melodic death metal, progressive metal, when you hear these songs, what they were able to do musically is amazing. I think to myself, what could have been accomplished if Chuck Schuldiner had survived? What if he'd been able to put out six more albums? My God, he was a genius. And... One of the great travesties of my life is not getting to see that band perform. Death is great. They are metal. Arguably one of the best metal bands that no longer exists. Okay, dude. This is one of those rare occasions where you and I agree. Chuck was an amazing guitarist. He was an amazing songwriter. He deserves the respect he's been given. And I love your choice for this. I only have one better. You go first. My number one defunct metal band is After Forever. The band, Brian, that started it all. Prison of Desire, Decipher, Invisible Circles, Reimagine, and the final self-titled album. I mean, you had Floor Jansen, Mark Jansen, Sander Gomans, Joss Vanderbrook, Soaring operatic vocals, demonic harsh vocals. They were so they were so far ahead of their time back in 2000. It it's just amazing. It's it's like they had a time machine and were able to go back from way way back 20 years ago and see where music was heading. If if I could see one band, it would be them. Prison of Desire to this day is one of my top five favorite albums. It is insane what they do there musically. I mean, everything that Floor and Mark have done thereafter in their respective bands, and including Epica, pales in comparison to that album. My number one band that no longer exists after forever. Okay, Gomfog, let me tell you about my number one band. It's a local band. There are so many bands out there full of talent, full of drive, full of desire that want to make it, and yet they don't make it, man. So one of the favorite bands that I had that I wish could come back together, could put some music together, could be great, is a band called Dirt Cheap from Owensboro, Kentucky. My cousin Greg Kyle played bass for them. There were so many good songs that they sang. Love Through a Mailbox. One of the classics, man. If you heard these guys, you would love them. And yet, they're stuck struggling. They're stuck in anonymity. And they're stuck trying to be the best metal band they can be. This is my tribute to those bands that do the best they can that have a love for the music, that have a desire to be better, that want to headbang, that want to rock and roll, that want to metal out, and yet they can't make it. I wish 
was a band that could become great again. Let me introduce a song to you called Love Through a Mailbox about one of their band members that passed away. It's an amazing thing to listen to. Here it is. you're not you're not doing uh pantera and you're also not doing three inches of blood god dang man i wish i had a thought of those fuck you dude how can you not think that those two those are the most obvious two ones dude they have so suck. many bands and i start looking god, them up and i'm like I'm holy close. shit they're still going man it's very great metal debate-ish but i i just fucking <laughs> Brian, I think we should probably wrap up this episode. I'm sorry, dude. 
I was trying to create a happy medium. I don't think I've done it. A reminder, you can get all our content, debate episodes, artist interviews, album reviews, and much more from iTunes, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And don't forget to join in the Metal Debate by following us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, Just use the keyword Metal Debate. Until our next podcast, sell your soul for metal and defend it until your dying day. 